What's going on guys? Today's video is going to cover another type of solder repair or braze repair that I've had to do in the past on evaporator coils. If you've ever seen evaporator coils that have a distributor tube that rubs out, it's a shame to replace a coil, especially one that's not necessarily old, just for a simple leak on a distributor tube. So I just wanted to show you a video just going over how I typically fix those. Now sometimes if it's just got a little place on there and it's not wide open, you can just gently braze over top of it and you're typically not going to run into any issue. If it's actually split or that you can physically see the hole in the pipe, I usually don't recommend doing that because this tube is so small that the likelihood of getting braze inside of it and stopping it up is fairly high. So we'll just say for our video's sake, Right here where that line is, is going to be where we have a rub out. So generally what I'm going to do is gently bend the distributor tube that I'm going to be working on out of the way. The biggest thing with moving it is I usually want to make sure that this distributor up here, as well as where it attaches to the coil, don't move a whole lot. The center piece can move really as much as you need it to, but just keep those two ends as fixed as possible and you can sort of bend that out to be able to get it away in order to get a tubing cutter on there. Now, some people use a file and you'll file the edge around. The biggest thing you're trying to do is avoid closing the hole up. If you use a tubing cutter and you cut all the way through it, your reamer is not gonna be large enough to fix that and open the pipe back up. So typically what I'll do is I'll go ahead and clean this up and then I will start using the tubing cutter. I'll get about three quarters of the way through the copper and then I will just snap the copper. And that typically leaves the hole relatively wide without the use of a reamer. And again, I'm using these Scotch-Brite pads there. Super cheap, you can get them at the grocery store and they do a pretty good job. So that's relatively clean there. And usually the key with cutting this tubing is to just do it very gently. You don't want to torque the tubing cutter down too quickly because it will smash that pipe flat and we want to keep as much opening as possible. I've also done this on air handlers that are in a horizontal position that have a slab coil, especially like Carrier Bryant styles, where they have a TXV and you have to change that TXV out. A lot of times I'll use this technique on the equalizer tube just because I don't want to have to pull the whole coil out necessarily just to change the TXV. So what I'll do is instead of sweating the entire equalizer tube out of the suction line, I'll just cut it off fairly low, just high enough off of the drain pan where I can braise it. And then I'll sleeve it with a piece of quarter inch copper. But you can see I've, hopefully you can see that. But you can see I've scored pretty deep into the copper. And then usually what you can do is just gently bend it back and forth a couple times. And you'll be able to pop that open. Let's see if I can get this turned to where you can see it. And there you can see nice wide opening. It's not pinched off or anything. Because if you close that off, you're never going to get a reaming tool in there. I'll flip this one over too so you can see. Nice wide openings. So what I would do is if our leak was right here, obviously I would cut that piece out. And then I would take a piece of quarter inch copper and basically make an extended coupling over that area. Now I will make sure that these two don't butt together, but I'll also make sure that they're inserted far enough into this quarter inch 
where I'm not going to risk brazing them shut. So let me get that set up and we'll get right back to it. All right, guys, so we've cut the piece of the pipe out that was damaged. So everything is ready to go. Everything's cleaned up. So now what we'll do is we'll just take a little piece of quarter inch copper and we'll basically sleeve this section, making like a coupling. That is about as far as I usually allow the pipe to go into the quarter inch, sleeve over it, just so it gives me enough room out here to braise without the worry of sealing up that hole. And I'll do the same thing on both sides. Typically what I'll do is I'll take like a small pair of channel locks or needle nose and I'll crimp down one side of this, sort of pinch it off just so it stays snug. So when I'm brazing it, it doesn't want to slide back and forth. So I'll go ahead and see if I can slide this on the pipe. You can see I've already crimped this side down just a little bit and just keep in mind where the end of that piece of pipe is in there. And sometimes you'll have to move things around. Like I said, it's no problem to move this pipe around this uh, distributor tube as long as you're making sure that the two ends stay relatively fixed. Those are the two places that you don't want to mess with. So make sure that each end is inserted maybe about a half an inch into the uh, piece of quarter and then you're good to go. So we can go ahead and fire up the torch and get this brazed up. And I'm just going to be using an oxygen acetylene torch, just a little number two tip. Don't need much heat at all to be able to breathe this. It's really, really small. And this would be a perfect opportunity to use the Viper gel. So you don't run the risk of melting that drain pan, especially if you're on a job site. This is a little bit different because obviously I'm in my garage doing this repair. And of course you would want to flow nitrogen. And again, it doesn't take much. A little bit of trapped oil in this line. This is just one of our scrap coils. And that should be it. Again, super simple. We'll go ahead and cool that off for a second and then we'll take a look at it up close. All right guys, hopefully you can see everything's all cleaned off. You can see we got a nice good seal on that end. Camera will focus. Hopefully you can see. We got a good braze on that side too. And that's pretty much it. Then all I would do is just gently bend this back into the drain pan and you'd be good to go. Now, like I was saying before, I also have used this technique on TXVs on the equalizer tube, especially on horizontal applications in the attic where the sensing bulb and the equalizer tube are mounted obviously on the suction line, which is right up against the drain pan in the bottom of the unit. Rather than having to pull the entire evaporator coil out to do that repair, I will sleeve uh, that tube, that eighth inch tube, just like this, no different. So it makes it a little bit easier for me without having to pull the entire coil out of the pan. So now what I'm going to do, because on a previous video that I was doing uh, using this coil where I was sealing the uh, fin pack from a repair, I'm going to go ahead and cut both ends of this and then I'm going to cut it down the center and we'll take a look inside and see what these pipes look like. See if I filled it up with braze or not. All right, guys, so we went ahead and cut out that repaired section that I just did. And I went ahead and then cut that in half just to show you that neither one of those pipes, the eighth inch pipes that are inside of there, got any braze in them. So they're both still wide open, no problems at all. So that's the reason why I sleeve the quarter inch over it, roughly about a half an inch on either side, just so I don't have to run the risk of getting braze in the end and sort of defeating the purpose of the repair. One other thing I'm going to show you before I leave is you saw the way that I cut the pipe originally, where 
you basically score it and go about halfway to maybe three quarters into the pipe just very gently and then you just gently bend it back and forth and break it that leaves you a nice large opening and keeps that diameter the integrity of the pipe in place this is what happens if you just quick and dirty just use a tubing cutter and tighten it down you can see how small that diameter is compared so that's why I really harp on the way you cut the pipe is definitely important because you're never going to be able to ream that. Now you might be able to stick something in there and widen it back out. But if you just use the technique that I showed earlier to cut the pipe, you won't have to run into that at all. So hopefully that repair helped. If you like these videos, comment below. I'll make more of them if there's other types of repairs that you'd like to see similar to this. Again, comment below or you can email us at officialhvacnsc.com. Again, thanks for watching. Thanks for the support. Like, comment, subscribe, and we will see you on the next one.